Fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy night. Hello, everybody. Hope you are going well. So today I'm coming to you from my bedroom. I'm still in a house sit situation. I really, really am missing um, my studio back home right about now, but that's all right. We're working with what we got. I am a little bit late to my review for The Favourite, which uh, released in the UK on the 1st of January. So it's been a couple of weeks now, but everybody has been talking about this film. Olivia Coleman just recently won the Best Actress Award for the Golden Globes and Rachel Weisz and Emma Stone were both nominated. So, you know, everybody's talking about this. I knew, I knew we were dealing with something special. Yagos Lanthimos is a curious director. His previous 2005 15 film The Lobster I have to quietly admit boom like right over my head that was on my first watch though so I want to say that I've grown in my appreciation for this particular director's style and Yagos Lanthimos material is is not for everyone so when approaching his next film The Killing of a Sacred Deer I approached it with a totally fresh perspective and way to attack that kind of subject material and let me tell you I was on board. That's my backstory and now let's talk about the favorite and holy cow this film like I'm dizzy because this film ran circles around me and I loved it. Okay let's talk about the story here we go. The story follows Olivia Coleman's character playing Queen Anne who's this dumpy and plain woman. She doesn't seem to have the motivation or the slightest interest at all in running her country but luckily Rachel Weiss, her confidant and lover does and she is the one who whispers in the ear of the Queen or all her personal political agendas. Emma Stone arrives, Rachel Weisz's estranged cousin, and she disrupts the status quo, and now you've got two women sort of vying for the attentions of the Queen. I guess that's it in a nutshell, the favourite. Who is the favourite and in favour of the Queen? Because a royal person's favour can just turn on a whim. That is this much of the movie, the story, but what is so much more interesting is the character dynamics and how the story plays out. Who we identify with and who we love and who we hate within the characters because as the film gets going you know Emma Stone she's the down on her luck, wide-eyed and naive person. Uh, she's come to the Queen household to seek work and she's the one that we identify with so immediately she's the person we're rooting for but as this film continues to unfold and these power dynamics and struggles unfold I found throughout the middle of the film my my attention's turning in myself as an audience member between who I actually wanted to succeed. This is a film that's dark humour but I was genuinely laughing out loud in the cinema at Olivia Coleman's performance playing this queen. She is so vulnerable, she's so helpless. The perfect example of the absurd depression that I'm talking about, the funny sad, is this scene where Olivia Coleman is eating cake and she knows that it is going to upset her stomach and make her sick but she continues to eat this cake in one hand and then <laughs> throw up the cake in the other hand and then continuing to eat the cake. So it's pathetic. It is truly, truly rock bottom pathetic. And it's also funny. I feel bad that you, you, you feel bad to laugh at it, but it's funny. The performances from these uh, three women, these three incredible actors were just out of the park. They knocked it out of the park and I was, I was captivated from beginning to end. And then over the entirety of this film, as is true, Yagos Lanthimos style is an element of the surreal. The costumes seem like they're accurate to the time period on the surface, but if you look a little bit closer, there's elements in the in the costuming and the outfits and the moles on the faces that turn from little moles to stars to moons to like big emblems on the side of the cheek <laughs> that this is not historically accurate. It looks like it's accurate on the surface of it but you scratch the surface a little bit and this is complete fantasy. Another example looking at it from a camera perspective there are these wide fish eye angles which is 
an extremely modern type of camera angle to have a fish eye where you can see almost 180 degrees the entire hallway or the entire room and that perspective is an extremely modern approach in a historical film you would never expect to see a lens choice like that i adored this film i've never seen a, a period drama with a level of absurdity and uh how do i say this like veneer of modernity like i've never seen a genre mashup style quite like this and also this film stars lots of cute little rabbits you guys know that i am a rabbit mama myself my little rabbit is going to be nearly 12 years old if you can believe it she is a senior rabbit now but i definitely give the tick of approval to any film that has rabbits in it guys they are my thoughts on the favorite i'm going to have to readdress my top 10 films from 2018 now because this has just skyrocketed like to the top of my list i'm gonna have to reevaluate everything thank you so much for hanging out with me today don't forget you can also subscribe to my channel here and keep up to date with all things movies and tv leave me a comment in the comment section down below let me know if you've seen this one did you think it was batshit crazy did you love it i'd love to know and i will see you next time bye